Follow these nine essential houseplant care tips and I guarantee that you will have a thriving houseplant in your home that you can be proud of. These tips are really easy to implement and do not cost you a thing. So you should be able to implement all these tips starting today. Tip number one is to pin the stems of your plant to the top of the soil to encourage the stem to develop roots, grow stronger, and push out new stems. So this tip is particularly useful for vining plants such as Tradescantias or the very popular string of hearts and is useful for developing a fuller plant at the base of the plant. Along the stem of vining plants there will be numerous leaf nodes from which leaves develop but also from which roots and new stems can develop as well. If these nodes come into contact with soil then roots will be encouraged to develop and then new stems should follow. This is essentially how a Tradescantia grows in the wild. It creeps along the floor of the forest and attaches itself to the ground, making itself stronger at each node point. This then allows the plant to grow long, strong stems. Pinning the stems of the plant is a really great way to make a plant that is perhaps bald or bare in the pot fuller with lots of new stems. If you have a long string of heart stem, then consider taking that stem and laying it on top of the soil for it to develop roots and push out new stems. This way you'll have a fuller plant in no time. My second essential tip is one that most beginner houseplant enthusiasts are fearful of, but one that is super healthy for your plant, and that is to regularly prune your plant to encourage stronger, bushier growth. I can't stress enough that pruning your houseplants will do no harm at all to your plant, but will actually make your plant much healthier. When you cut the stem of the plant, it does not kill the stem. Instead, it normally encourages the plant to send out two new shoots on the stem from where you first made the cut. If you regularly do this to your plant, then you will end up with a nice bushy plant with lots of stems and lots of leaves. So I have a video on how to make a Tradescantia bushier by following this technique. It's how YouTubers such as Plantarina have these amazingly bushy plants in their videos. They regularly prune and propagate their plants, which makes their plants lush and extra bushy. So have absolutely no fear about making the wrong cuts on your plants. They always grow back. Essential tip number three is to go through and clean and remove the dead leaves from the soil of your plants. If you allow the leaves that have fallen from the plant to decay on top of the soil, then this can cause issues with pests and disease further down the line. Pests such as fungus gnat larvae feed off the decaying matter in your plant's soil. So essentially by not removing the fallen leaves from the soil, you are creating the perfect environment for fungus gnats to thrive. Not removing fallen leaves also reduces circulation around the plant's crown, which can then lead to fungus or rot developing on the stems near the soil line. This can be seriously detrimental to the health of your plant. Whenever I water my plants, I always check the soil line of my plants and remove any dead leaves that have fallen. This also makes the plants look neat and tidy, which is always nice in our homes. My next tip is to rotate your house plants on a regular basis. So I've mentioned this tip before in one of my previous videos, but I think this is a really important step to make sure that your plant has even growth. If you keep your plant on a windowsill, then you probably have noticed that most of the leaves on the plant are facing in the direction of the window. This is of course because the plant is searching for natural light so that it can photosynthesize and store energy for growth. Therefore, to avoid having a plant that is lopsided and strong on growth on one side, but not the other, we need to rotate our plants regularly so that all the leaves have access to indirect sunlight. I rotate my plants about 90 degrees every week and I do this when I'm watering my plants as part of my weekly houseplant chores. So I'm essentially killing two birds with one stone. The next tip is probably one of my favourite tips and that is to bottom water your houseplants. So I started doing this about two years ago as part of my defence against those pesky fungus gnats 
and I've not looked back since. Bottom water in your house plants is super healthy for the plant's roots because it encourages the roots to go down to the bottom of the pot where it searches for the water. This is healthy for your plant because it stops the roots from circling at the top of the pot where the plant's crown is. So it avoids it potentially choking the plant when it gets root bound. Bottom watering also means that the top of the soil, the top two inches, remains relatively dry which is a key fungus gnat prevention method. Fungus gnats like to lay their eggs in the top two inches of moist soil. So by keeping the top two inches dry, you disrupt that cycle. Check out my how to get rid of fungus gnats video for more details. Bottom watering is also beneficial because it reduces the chance of getting water droplets on the leaves of the plant that can eventually turn to rot. I also find it much less time consuming and much easier to water all of my plants. I've got a full video on this topic so have a look after this guys. So I've got four more awesome tips to share with you guys but if you're enjoying the video so far, then I'd be really happy if you'd hit the like button. It really helps the video reach more people, so thank you very much. Did you know that vining plants grow bigger leaves when they are growing up something rather than hanging down from the pot? A philodendron brazil, for example, will grow bigger leaves when the vines are staked onto something and allowed to grow vertically. This mimics the way they grow in their natural habitat, which is on the floor of tropical rainforests where they cling onto and climb up their surrounding trees. As they grow higher, they tend to develop larger leaves, which allows them to photosynthesize more effectively and store more energy for growth. So if you have a vining plant, try staking it up onto something such as a moss pole or even just one of those garden sticks and see how the leaves get bigger as it gets taller. This is a great way of having a real statement plant as a conversation piece in your home that gets bigger as it gets taller. Your plants will accumulate dust in much the same way as your shelves do. Therefore, it is important to keep your plant's leaves free from dust by giving them a clean once a month. Your plant relies on sunlight, of course, to keep them alive through photosynthesis. And if there is a thick layer of dust, then this will obviously impact on the plant's ability to photosynthesize. It's a really good idea just to go through your plants on a regular basis with a damp cloth and give the leaves a good wipe to clean them. Your plants will respond by looking healthy, clean and growing faster. I usually do this when I'm fertilizing my house plants about once a month and it also helps to keep the bugs at bay since you're regularly cleaning your plants. Your plants roots are developing really quickly during the growing season of spring and summer and this means that plants tend to outgrow their pots fairly quickly. They get to a point where there are too many roots in the pots and not enough soil which limits the amount of nutrients the plant receives. This eventually leads to yellowing or crispy brown leaves, which obviously looks unsightly and is unhealthy for the plant. It's therefore really important to check whether your plants need a repot into a bigger pot at least once a year. So I do this in spring, just as plants are getting ready to push out a flush of new growth after the winter, and this sets them up nicely for the summer ahead and enables them to push out strong new growth all season long. Make sure you don't put your plants into too big a pot as this can lead to problems such as overwatering and rotting of the roots. You generally only want to be potting up into one or two sizes bigger than what the pot is already. I've got a few videos on me repotting my house plants so do check out that series after this guys. My next essential tip is to make sure your house plants are getting good air circulation, especially during the summer. Good air circulation promotes water evaporation, transpiration, prevents condensation on the leaf surfaces, which in turn reduces the chances of fungal infections and rot. Good air circulation also helps in making the plant's growing limbs stronger, which makes for a much stronger plant that is able to better fight against pests and diseases. 
So there are a few things we can do to improve air circulation around our plants. We can open the windows during the summer or use a fan to blow air around the room, mimicking the outside world where our plants normally live. And we can also make sure that each of our plants has enough space to allow air to circulate around the plant. All of these things will make your plant stronger and reduces the risk of fungus and rot developing on the leaves and stems. If you want to know about nine cool houseplant hacks that actually work for your next video, then click on the link here and I'll show you some really interesting tips and tricks to help you better look after your houseplants and I'll see you there. Thank you very much for watching.